So my name is Oscar Hedin, and I would like to tell you a story on a personal and a professional change. A story about how I, how I changed when I tried to understand another human being. And it's also a story about how you can use film as a tool for change. I am a documentary filmmaker and I have made several films that have been recognized and films that have had an effect on the society. As when you are young and when you come into a trade, you, you learn the trade from, from the, the persons within the trade. And so did I. And I found out after some years that this tradition was very limited. You know, more or less I was learned that if you want to be a documentary filmmaker, you find a story, you go to the film institute or the TV channels, the broadcasters, you, s you say to them, please join me to tell this story. And in nine out of ten cases, they said no, there was no story made. And sometimes I made a film, and the film was transformed into a tape. It was aired and sometimes screened at the theaters. This was very interesting work, and of course, you know, I, I, was, I really appreciated it, but it was hard. And then came the digital revolution. Everything collapsed, you know. The audience, they were, some, they were somewhere else, you know. They were not looking at TV anymore. And the, um, nobody wanted to pay any longer. And uh, there were new content on new media. So, you know, who am I? And I was in the middle of this mist. And I understood that I had to change, but I didn't know how. And then suddenly, something else happened that forced me to change. And I think it also at least forced you to relate to it in different ways. No, 9-11, after this happened, I knew that it would form my generation. And as a filmmaker, I, 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 I was very annoyed. Because after 9-11, I s only saw two kinds of stories. One was that um, Al-Qaeda and their supporters, they were the threat against my lifestyle, the Western civilization. civilization. And the other story was that Al-Qaeda and their supporters, they were a product of the unfair U.S. rule of the world. And maybe those stories can be true. Of course, they can be in, to some extent. But in all those stories, Al-Qaeda and their supporters, they were used as elements for other stories. The those men and women, they were never characters themselves. And I was very interested in who they were, you know. What did they tell their children when they were kissing them goodnight? Or what did they dream about? So I decided to do a film. And in Gothenburg, I found a young group of men who were Al-Qaeda supporters. They, um, after a year, they gave me the confidence, or they have they felt confidence in me, and, and I, was, I had the opportunity, opportunity to film them so I could start to do this film. And my aim was never to sort of try to understand if they were terrorists or not. They were for sure portrayed so in media. My aim was to understand who they were, and the result was this film, Aching Heart.
to peace and law. We are Muslim. The lions are coming. They are ready to attack. Sweden's embassy in Bosnia-Herzegovina says it will be supporting a Swedish teenager who's been given one of the longest prison sentences ever handed down to a Swede by a foreign court. The 19-year-old was found guilty... Explain for me the difference. You take a tiara, an airplane, take a four-ton bomb, up, no, you cannot even see the airplane, and you drop it, and a lot of people will die. Salam. I am the man, not the man up in the sky. You can't hear nothing on the Arctic Satil, the control are in there. On the Elska, Allah, Prophet, and Mayor, nothing on that, which you can offer at the half of Allah, Prophet, and also. You got to trick you, Damascus. Say, that if you're many, you can say, you're not going to be gone. So, if you enter, what comes to you, you can flip over. True, maybe. This film, of course, of the topic and I don't know about the craft, it gained a uh, lot of attention. It won prizes and nominations and the media was very interested. But I felt when I did this film, or when I had did it, done it, I really wanted the film to have another arena as well, not only the television and the theatres. So I, I gathered money to carry out a widespread outreach campaign, both in Sweden and abroad. So I traveled with this film. I traveled, screened it, published it on different platforms. And I started to feel that this was it. Not only, you know, that I, as, as, a, <laughs> as a filmmaker, has the possibility to show my work. It was more that when we did this together, the film started debates, it initiated thoughts, it became a tool for change. And it's still a tool for change, this film. And I had to rethink, who am I? What do I work with? And I realized that producing those tapes is not really the best interpretation of my work. You know, the best interpretation of my work is to create those meetings. Producing the tapes is only the, the midway of the, of the project. And this new mindset, it helped me to put even more effort on the audience, to have even higher ambitions on the, on the story itself when I shall tell it. It helped me to, to partner up with new partners that also had an interest in outreach and, and the meeting from the very beginning. And I became a filmmaker of today. So, 9-11, the digital revolution, those young men in Gothenburg that they had the opportunity to, to learn and uh, you know, to, to get to know and some curiosity. It helped me to form new methods to change.